Hey, welcome back to the European Schoolnet Academy Games in Schools course. This is module one, which is about why you use computer games. And actually the title of this video is exactly the same as the title of the whole module. And in this short video, we're really gonna be thinking about why might we use computer games in the classroom. And we're also gonna be thinking about some of the arguments that we might present to uh, other teachers within the school, our line managers, our head teachers, our principals, and indeed even parents about why computer games are important and why they make really, really powerful learning tools. When I think about this, I'm always reminded by one of my favourite quotes that comes from my old friend Derek Robertson, who now works at the University of Dundee in Scotland. And Derek always used to say that good teachers use good tools. And what he meant by that is that a good teacher will take a good learning and teaching tool and they will apply that in their classroom setting, depending on the learner need. And that good tool might be taking children outside. It might be using paint, it might be using pens, it might be using wood, hammers and nails or metalwork. It might be using plastics. And of course, it might be using computer games if those computer games can create interesting and engaging learning experiences that are gonna motivate children and also help them meet their learning outcomes. Ultimately, I suppose, we really need to think a little bit about school and what we're trying to do in school. And I think within school, what we're trying to do is we're trying to make sure that we give children knowledge uh, and knowledge is still important in schools. But we're also trying to make sure that they've got the skills to help them thrive in the 21st century and beyond. And of course, when we think about different skills and which skills are important, there are lots and lots of people that have got their own opinions on this. Um, <clears throat> one of the sets of skills that we used a lot when I was working in Scotland was a framework which is called Skills 4.0, Skills for the Future. The World Economic Forum talks a lot about skills, skills that were important in 2015, schools that, skills that might be more important in 2020, based on surveys that they've done around the future of jobs report, report by speaking to um, different employers. And within the Lego Foundation, we sometimes talk about the skills for holistic development being physical skills, social skills, creative skills, emotional skills, and also cognitive skills. And even though the different names of these frameworks might be a little bit different, is nobody is arguing that skills are not important. And of course, if you think about it, we develop skills by through engaging and immersive experiences. And these engaging and immersive experiences really are good learning and teaching appro approaches. So I would suggest that learning through play and playful learning approaches are a really, really good way of being able to develop a whole range of holistic skills. And I suppose if you think about how play has evolved mechanically over time, you know, we might think of it a bit like this. You know, we've got some types of play where the only option, you know, was no uh, technology, you know, or no manipulatives at all. You know, we've moved through the times where, you know, we're starting to get other types of play where children have got things to pick up, build, blocks to put together, Rubik's cubes to solve. And of course, more recently, you know, but particularly, uh, I would say in the last 20 years, we've got things like computer games, which takes the fundamentals of good gameplay and puts that into the, the digital realm, you know, through screens and more interactivity around things as well. It's also really important that when we think about learning through play, that we've got a spectrum of practice. <clears throat> and you can see from this diagram here, over on the left hand side, we've got free play where children just kind of get on with it. It's complete down to their choice. And over on the right hand side, we've perhaps got more structure and more instruction. Of course, the really powerful part of this tends to come in the minute, come, come in the middle, where children have got choice, yet, but they're also guided or coached by the classroom teacher in order to meet those learning outcomes. And when we think about the five characteristics of playful experiences, and these characteristics, of course, are not just found in computer games, but they're also found in other aspects of play as well. This is what they are. We know that good play is meaningful, it's joyful, it's socially interactive, it's actively engaging, and it's iterative, where children can take things apart and they can try things again and again and again. And of course, if I really wanted to think that through in terms of what this means for a classroom teacher, I could think about these five characteristics of playful experiences, meaningful, joyful, socially interactive, actively engaging and iterative, and actually, these would be five really, really good experiences that I would want in any classroom and in any lesson as well. And I suppose if I think it through even further than that, and I think about the domain of digital play, good digital play, then as well as having these five characteristics of an excellent lesson, I can also start to have these highly personalized experiences for children, which is also delivering this real-time feedback. 
And if we think about this, then these are some really, really powerful terms for us to have in our classroom. So a bit of introduction about why I think games based learning is really, really important. And maybe you can have a think about this before your next video, before the next video. Why don't you have a little think about what what was your favorite game or what thing did you like playing with uh, either now or perhaps when you were a child? Looking forward to seeing you in the next video and don't forget to use the hashtag games course to bind the conversation together.